I jokingly say I was raised on a tour bus. I've you know been to a lot of uh, countries in, in 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 the world, but I loved my childhood. It was well. Um, I guess to every child, um, their childhood is uh, a normal childhood. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That was normal. It was normal to me. Yeah. <laughs> Except that there were some of us who would have given a right arm to have Donnie and Marie as an aunt and uncle. But <laughs> I'm, I'm going on and on. Oh, hey, Timothy Ratajak here. On behalf of Against the Thai Media, I want to welcome you to another episode of Chatting with the Chosen. Today, uh, Noah Bennett and I will be interviewing Eric Osman, who appears in the season two episode, The Perfect Opportunity, where he plays the character Petronius. Eric, thank you and welcome. Thank you. Honored to be here. I'll, uh, I'll let Noah start things off and then we'll bounce back and forth. Well, Eric, first of all, I was wondering uh, how you got connected with Dallas Jenkins, who's obviously people know him as the creator, director of The Chosen. Was there like a whole audition process with that or did they reach out to you? Yes, there was an audition process. Um, in fact, I auditioned for the the guard who was at the gate when Atticus was, was there with the apple right there at the front gate. What is your name, soldier? Linus Silnius, sir. Linus, I want you to take your next assignment very seriously. My next assignment, sir? The Antonia Fortress is not a residential area. It is a public forum. That man does not have family there. Do you understand? The potential attack coming in, and uh, that was my initial audition. And he said, uh, can you, uh, I think, do, do it a different way, like with an accent or something. So I did it in a different way. And then I think it was either two or three times where uh, he's like, okay, try this. And so I get a message from my manager saying audition for... Um, this role of Petronius. And so it was not a direct audition kind of back and forth. It was like a back and forth in different ways. And that's how that came about. So it's pretty cool. Really exciting. The, the character of Petronius is a bit of a mystery to say the least. He seems to be a well-born and certainly well-dressed <laughs> yeah. uh, Roman. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have to see the episode in order to get that joke, folks. Right, um, right. And his line, I don't get paid to blend in. I'd have asked you to meet me in the town square if I'd known you'd show up looking like a senator. I don't get paid to blend in. I'm Petronius, and you are the cohort urbany? Atticus Emilius. Uh, Indicates some type of class snobbery. Uh, How did you approach the character? (laughs) Yeah, how did you approach the character, and what insight did, did Dallas Jenkins give you during the... During the shooting. Oh man, this is a great question. There, there's there's a lot of depth to this because I originally auditioned to be a soldier, right? And so when the kind of went back and forth, and then to play this character who was also a guard, a you know bodyguard essentially, um, I thought I was going in to play a soldier again. So literally had the part of Petronius and going in, and I'm, I walk into wardrobe expecting to get some armor on and be a cool guard as well. And I think you know it said well dressed, like you said it perfectly, well dressed, well fed Roman is literally what it says in the script. Um, I don't know how you found that out, but that's really cool. That's awesome. It's a perfect phrase. Oh, they should just spell it. It's <laughs> perfect. Yeah, because that's literally what it said. Well dressed, well fed. And so I went in there thinking, what does that mean? Are they going to put like a, like, a, like a fat suit on me, well fed or something? I had no idea what was going on. And, um, and uh, they, they said, this is your, your outfit and wardrobe. And I looked at that and I was like, really? And they're like, yes, that's what that meant. And I was like, oh, okay. Because they just interpret what that means, right? Wardrobe. And then when I put that on, and it was very, you know, pompous. And, you know, I was carrying this, this, everything, and had all these rings on, and I didn't want to just hide in my trailer. So I went out on set as this Petronius character, trying to create, recreate this character on set. And it all started off with people saying, because it's the first of its kind ever in the show, this type of character. And 
I said, well, well, they wanted me to do this type of accent and, and, and it, it all led up to be this kind of, as you say, snobbery, is that what you said? Snobbery is yeah. the perfect word. <laughs> type of character. And, uh, so I was a snob like that, like, oh, this, of course, I was really nice and, and whatever, but it was kind of like snooty, you know, and people would come up to me on set and they're like, oh, is he real? Like everybody thought I was like a real person. And it was really fun to stay in character all day that way because we were on set all day. This character developed while I was talking to everybody I could on set to kind of really hone in this character because this is not what I expected. In fact, it's not what Dallas expected to answer your question. He came up to me and he's like, oh, like that. <laughs> I was like, well, hello, you know, I didn't have a great character. And he's like, Okay, I like this. Let, let, let's roll with it. Okay, like it wasn't what he expected either. So we, we went with it and uh, it turned out to be what it was. So I think it was pretty fun. Well, Tim, I'm sure you'll agree with me, but that was method acting if I've ever heard it. Uh, well, I get the impression that Eric Osman isn't snobby, even though he comes <laughs> from a, a well-born family. Um, but... Uh, I, I think you managed to pull it off with a great deal of uh, panache. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. It was really fun. A really cool opportunity. Well, in the episode, an assassination plot of the Zealots fails, and this plot is the reason Atticus brought you to the city. Do you think that Petronius was glad the plot, the plot failed, or do you suppose he was looking for some sort of action? Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I would think Petronius would throw up if he saw blood. Actually, in my opinion, of him, <laughs> um, like he, he'll, he'll play it up pretty big, you know, but uh, I think the way, at least the, my interpretation of him and the character that he'll, he'll talk a big show, but then as soon as he saw blood, I don't know. But then again, I could be wrong because, you know, um, there could be more layers to his character than I'm even aware of. So I'd love to explore that more if, if uh, looking back on that, would be kind of cool. So. Uh, well, that would certainly be a fun thing to see. Maybe uh, Petronius pass out in the streets or something. <laughs> or or maybe or maybe he begged to go back to rome uh, who oh knows? yeah and maybe he would love it you know maybe, maybe he maybe he would have gotten into it i don't know but i, I just think that the, the, the character that the, my, my interpretation of this character was that he was very uh, anxious and the anxiety could create that type of response as far as like oh no blood or anxiety in a positive way it just depends on either way the way it was set up it could have gone either way but right it would be funny now, it's my understanding that a great deal of season two was filmed in Goshen, Utah, which is a very small but beautiful town, obviously, in Utah County. The second season was also filmed during the COVID pandemic. I'm curious to know what it was like to be on the set and what accommodations had to be made um, to keep the actors safe without uh, compromising their talent. Uh, we were tested regularly throughout the day. And in between takes, did you guys spread out? Or? Yeah. yeah, everybody had masks on and we spread out. And um, then, you know, every few hours they bring out the, the test and we do the test. And other than that, it was pretty normal, pretty normal set as far so, as the energy goes. So while you were portraying the character of Petronius, you weren't in the back of your mind thinking, oh, my goodness, I hope Atticus doesn't infect me. <laughs> No. Or, or did that cross your mind? I, no, no, it was a very safe set. It, it was very, safe. yeah, great energy. Everybody was very positive with it. Nobody created a fear or anything like that. No anxiety. <laughs> You've got good instincts. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you grew up in, in Utah. Did you already have a level of familiarity with Goshen? Was that already on your radar screen? I, I didn't know it existed, frankly. And like, I knew that there, because the, the set was already there. Um, until like the chosen came out and like, 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 Oh my gosh. And I'm like, like, what is this? But, uh, that set has been used before. I mean, for other productions. Um, but, uh, I personally didn't know where Goshen was. I, I actually had to like look it up and, and follow my GPS to get there. So, but it is beautiful. You're right. It is gorgeous. It's amazing. Now, well, well, you probably can't answer this one, but I'll ask. Uh, was there any indication that your character would return in season three or any other future seasons? Uh, no indication that I'm aware of, but if you hear anything, let me know. They, le <laughs> le they left it kind of on a cliffhanger. You I know? will. Yeah. Keep me posted. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you have been described as an actor, a singer, a speaker, and a fitness model of all things. 
Uh, you are also a second generation Osman. You are the son of Jay Osman from the Osmonds. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Do you think it was inevitable that you would end up in the entertainment business? Uh, I, I tried other things, but uh, everything that I tried, it always came back to, hey, sing me a song. You know, I tried to sell, I did real estate for about, you know, a decade. And during that time, I got, I got, you know, properties sold because, you know, they wanted me to sing a song or something. And <laughs> so, <laughs> somehow it always came back to being an Osmond and there's always a connection there. So um, it's actually been very helpful in everything that I've done. And, and uh, naturally, it just kind of came back to, um, to this world. So, yeah, it's been really a blessing to have the name. Um, that's great. And what exactly were your hopes and dreams while you were growing up? And do you still have ambitions that are as yet unrealized? Oh yeah. I think, I think we all, um, have those hopes and dreams that aren't realized yet. I mean, we're still alive, right? So we have that opportunity to get those you know, fulfilled in our, in our, in our uh, experiences in life. And I think that if you don't have those dreams, I, I suggest go in and get them because, uh, that's, that's what keeps us going. You know, that's what makes us, uh, makes life exciting. So I definitely do have dreams unrealized yet, but, uh, I have realized a lot of them so far and we need to keep creating that, um, uh, for the rest of our, our time here on this planet. So it's really cool. You, that's one of the things I love about this whole artsy kind of work, whether it's film or music, it's, um, a lot of people who do it really have a passion for it. And if you really have a passion for yeah. whatever it is, then you should do it. Yeah. Like what you guys are doing here. Like, I love what you're doing. Like you're, 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 you're showing that right now. And I think that's fantastic. Your, your energy and passion with this. So thank you. I mean, that's what brings us all together. So yeah. Thanks to your talents and everything with that. Thank you. That's been an incredible journey. Great to get to chat with people like you who have a similar passion. Well, we're, we're going to shift gears for a bit here. Um, just in case the folks out there are unaware of it. Um, I'm happy to say that you uh, recently won uh, an award for Best Supporting Actor for a feature film called Grandpa's Crazy at the Utah Film Festival, and congratulations on that. Um, I've only seen the trailer for the movie because I think the film is still playing the festival circuit. Can you talk a little bit about uh, grandpa's crazy and and the role you play in it yeah so grandpa's crazy is a uh, story about family dynamics as far as you know um getting attention there's a lot of dynamics but that is to me that was part of the main um factor is like like, like that attention from father to son uh grandfather to grandson uh in this case um and the grandfather as you can see in the trailer can't get that from his son who is me that's the part that i play and he, so he pretends to go senile to get his attention to have him come around more often and, and, and make that happen. But, uh, in that process, and I can say this because it's in the trailer, like they, 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 they try to like, you know, declare him incompetent and things like that. And so it kind of backfires and that's what the story is about. And, and, uh, the film is really cool because it does touch on a lot of those, uh, family dynamics that people don't really talk about. Um, you know, like that, that attention seeking thing that, we, you know, it's uh, it's sad, but it, but it, they they hit it on just the right way to make it uh, more helpful in, in family dynamics. Would you describe it as a as a family film, something that people can sit down with their kids and watch? Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's a great film. Um, Grandpa's Crazy is, is is a film for everybody, and like everybody who saw it that day uh, when it first premiered, not everybody, but several people came up to me and said that they got emotional during during certain scenes, and I got emotional watching my. My fellow cast members, you know, do their thing. And it was just really cool. They, it, it was a great cast and crew. Phenomenal film. I was very, very pleased with it. Yeah, did a great job. Oh, Dana, uh, directed by Dana, uh, Gerald and uh, produced and written by Dave Bresnahan. Really great guys. Oh, it sounds you know, like I, really great. I, I, once, uh, I once tried to have myself declared senile, but unfortunately my family believed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, very well. I, I haven't seen I haven't seen the film, but I'm really looking forward to it. Noah, yeah, it sounds like a great film, and it touches on some of those things that you don't you never hear about nowadays. Like, right. especially with those kind of lost family connections that you especially see nowadays with elderly people, how a lot of times they're 
own families, like children and grandchildren, will just kind of toss them aside. Um, and we see too much of that. So it, it's nice that that you can kind of touch on that message in a film that kind of sounds like uh, an emotional and fun and um, humorous way. Yeah, I want to say they played the Osmond card, but they they asked me about my relationship with my family and and it did connect with the character that I play. So as far as bringing in the Osmond um, topic again for this film, they did use that um, where I try to get the attention of my father um, to be to have that stronger relationship. But um, I'll let you see the film to know what happens. But uh, it uh, will ring true for a lot. Looking forward to it. Thank you. And for the fans who want to see um, Grandpa's Crazy, should they expect a theatrical release or DVD, Blu-ray, or will it appear on some sort of streaming platform in the future? Ah, um, I don't know where yet. They're, they're still uh, in negotiations right now as far as where and how and when. So, but stay tuned, though. I'll, I'll keep you posted on social media for sure, though. And we'll, we'll, there will be announcements for sure. Shifting gears again, uh, as a singer... Uh, you've also provided some songs for some movies, including yeah. a, a song called Soldier Boy for a short film called uh, Casualty of War, which mm -hmm. I think you're in that, right? Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, there's a song called uh, Someone New from a feature film called Even in Dreams and talking about playing the Osman card. Uh, in that film, you play yourself and your cousin yeah. Nathan Osman who is a, a respected country music artist, uh, also plays himself. Can you tell us a, a little bit about both of those films and exactly how did they come about? So um, I've had the unique opportunity and blessing to be able to not only act, but you know, make songs for the movies that I'm in. And uh, it kind of adds this extra level of exposure for the film and those are two of the films that you mentioned those are the those are two recent ones that uh i had the opportunity to do that with there's been a few others and there's actually a new one for grandpa's crazy called free falling we're announcing that today so uh yeah good timing good timing yeah this one's a, a rock a rock song alternative rock song so that'll be a whole different thing i got to play my guitar while riding a skateboard in the skate park on this one so um this one's going to be a fun one but every one of those has a different story to them and because of the character you know, like you said, the, the, the getting into character and staying in that mode is great. And when you can pull that energy from the acting as a character, it really helps me make a song for the film. Because if I am that character, then it allows that to happen um, in a lot more of a unique way. And so for Even in Dreams, being able to play myself for it, there was no character to base it off of, but just being myself for it. So that was really cool to, to do that. That was fantastic. And my cousin got the same opportunity. He actually got to play more of an involved role as himself with this. It was really cool. He, he has a great inside joke about being a little bit country and a little bit oh. rock. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the fans to figure that one out. Um, yeah, we were going to use that for the film. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know that in Even Dreams, it your, the video was just strictly a performance video, but Soldier Boy was a bit more dramatic and, and, yeah. and poetic. Did you shoot the video? after the or did you put it together after the film was done had you written the song before it who was the same director who did the video for the song the same director that did the short film uh, good question uh for casualty of war yes. uh, they're, they're different every time that was a different crew different crew for um the shooting of the music video and different crew for the film even in dreams again those are two different crews first ad on santa box so i did a song for the santa box um that was the same uh, some of the same crew for that one. But yeah, sometimes they're different. Sometimes they're the same. So. It's a, the video for um, uh, Soldier Boy is poetic and a, a little s sad. Um, did, did you have friends who were in military and heard about their experience that you were able to draw on that? Um, yeah, I've, 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 I, I, I did make some phone calls and talking to people to see what, what, I'm singing about, you know, cause I didn't, for that particular song, I didn't write the lyrics on that one. Um, okay. That one was written by uh, Danny DeMosi. He, he, he produced and wrote that one. And uh, he and I usually co-write a song together and then he would produce it. 
Um, but that one was um, through his experience or his knowledge of that and our good friend who has a lot of weaponry from World War II. Um, and he's very passionate, the, the director of that film. And so shout out to uh, the Casualty of War film uh, because the props were essentially real. And uh, he really wanted it to be very authentic. It was just a short film, but he puts his heart and soul into that. Jacob Hamlin is the director on that. Um, and so he did all these, all this research on it, on it. And he's, you know, that's his life. He's very passionate about that. So when he described the character to me, that character I used for the emotion of um, the song. Yeah. And it's, it's all very sad, the whole, the whole story of what it is. So I'm glad you picked up on that. Um, not many people, unfortunately, catch all those uh, intricate details like you did. So excellent. Thank you. A lot goes into it. <laughs> yeah, and aside from working in the arts, we can't forget that you're also a fitness um, model. In fact, you're actually a personal trainer at uh, Metro Muscle, aka Eric Osman Fitness. Um, and of course, Tim and I, our chances of getting in shape anytime soon are very low. <laughs> <laughs> Don't but, say that. Uh, can, <laughs> somebody but can fitness training with you really in a sense physically transform a person well absolutely i speak for you know all trainers by saying that um when we train we don't just train physically there's like a world of, of benefits that come with it not just physical so emotional self-confidence psychological um social there's a lot of a lot of uh, great things from coming just from coming to the world in, in a more physical uh, fit place so a lot of my clients tell me that it benefits them that way, at least from their perspective to me. So that's what I have a lot of videos. Once I'm done training somebody, they'll make a video and they'll do a testimonial and they'll say how much the training has blessed their life, not just their personal relationships, and but everything else. It seems fitness is a foundational thing that people seem to go to when they want to change their lives. And so once that's kind of the one of the first steps people do, all the other, all the other parts of life kind of fall into play. So it's really cool that uh, fitness has been a benefit. I had the opportunity to experience that through my clients and through my own experiences. Yeah. Fitness is a great thing. Health is a great thing. Well, Noah's 15 and I'm a little older than 15. So when, when we say that there's probably no hope for us with Noah, it means that there's no hope yet with me. It means <laughs> it's a done deal. So <laughs> you've always got time. You can always got time to do whatever your goal is. So, uh, you know, <laughs> the clock's ticking. <laughs> And it, and it makes sense. I mean, you hear all kinds of things about um, how the body has all sorts of tie-ins with the mind and the soul, just yes. as far as keeping your body in shape and healthy. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, they say. And so, you know, if you're at the gym and you want to push one more, one more set, one more rep, that kind of equates back to your connection with life, like in an acting, like you can do one more take, you know, you got the energy to do it again. You want to try it again and again and again and again until you get it right. And that's, that's fitness is a reflection of a lot of things in life. Yeah. Okay. So now we mm -hmm. have some questions from the fans of the chosen. Okay. Let's do it. Fortunately. Um, sometimes the questions are really, really out there but at least in your case they were fairly normal okay uh, so um i'm ready we have a question from uh karen rose who asks uh besides covid what was the biggest challenge for you working on the chosen and how did you overcome it oh good question question karen um i would say the temperature it was freezing out there uh <laughs> everybody because i was wearing this long you know out outfit and uh it, it was off the ground about that far from my feet so i had this much space where this freezing air was going up into what i was wearing and so a lot of us had the same kind of outfit and so what we did was kind of squatted down a little bit and so it would touch the floor and so it kind of created this dome of heat and then we would do that in between takes so we were doing that a lot and uh that that was probably the most challenging because i'm shaking I, I i don't know if you can see it in the the shot but um you can see the breath um there everybody's you know we're, we're cold but uh, that was probably the most challenging but other than that everything was super smooth it was a great set and fan sherry staley bowman wants to know did the hairstylist curl your hair for the role or did they make you wear a wig 
in that uh, style. Yes, that was real. That, that, that was real hair. And it was very hard to tame that. Again, we went into it. I, I went in expecting to have a full on like buzz cut. I was I was ready to have my hair chopped because I thought I was playing a full on soldier and everything. Um, but uh, it turned out to be very different and and to the betterment of that. I loved it. I loved how it turned out. And it was even more fun to walk in wearing the, uh, you know, everything that I was wearing to the hair and makeup part of uh, the wardrobe was first. And then, then we went to hair and makeup. And they were like, oh, OK. So they looked at this book and they looked at some options. Well, we can do this, this, this and this. And uh, I, had, I had kind of shorter hair on the sides. And so I had really long hair on top. So they were like, let's just curl it. So <laughs> it was kind of a thing. And so they were very great on set, like after every take to make sure it was back to normal because um, it kept going out. You can tell in some of the shots that like it, it was wild. It was it had, it had a mind of its own. But uh, that, that was real. That was that was very real. Not a wig. <laughs> Good on you. Thank, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll never uh, that you thought you were going to have to go all Quintus. <laughs> Full scale Quintus. Right? <laughs> I mean, not that extreme, but I, was, I wasn't sure. But I was open to it. Whatever, whatever they needed, I, I was ready. Okay, shifting gears again slightly. Um, because I grew up in the 1960s and the 1970s, I can't remember a time... Uh, during my childhood, when the Osmond family wasn't on the TV or the radio. In fact, it was your father, Jay, who sang uh, the lead vocals on the hit single Crazy Horses back in uh, 1972. Coming from an entertainment royal family, so to speak, I'm curious to know, um, what was it like to have Donnie and Marie as an aunt and uncle? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was going to answer. <laughs> no, go ahead. You can answer it. <laughs> I was just like, I mean, I, I don't know any other, other I, I don't know any other Donnie and Marie uncle personally for me. I'm like that, that was my Donnie and Marie. You know, that was my aunt and uncle. I don't know any other um, connection to that. But uh, as far as what it was, is the experience fantastic. I, I love, I love, uh, well, I mean, there's still my aunt and uncle. I mean, it's not, not over, but uh, it's, it's fantastic. It, it's great. You know, I, I'll always them happy birthdays, you know, and they'll text me back or whatever and uh, say thank you and they wish me birthday or whatever. But we have that, that nephew to, you know, uncle and aunt connection. Same thing with all of my other um, uncles on my husband's side and, and my dad. We're all very close. I have a unique connection with all of my family and that's really good. We're all very close. So this, the serious question is, um, you were without a doubt in the middle of that juggernaut when your dad and all your uncles were touring mm -hmm. and playing and, yeah. and doing the, the whole Osmond thing. How were you able to have a normal childhood or did you not have a normal childhood? I, I, don't, I, I don't think it was very normal as far as what you might be implying, I guess, but normal, but uh, that was normal to me. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I jokingly say I was raised on a tour bus. I've, you know, been to a lot of, uh, countries in, 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 in the world, but mostly, you know, airports and just the venue. But, uh, so I never really got to experience too much of where we were, but it was a fantastic growing. I, I love, I loved my childhood. It was, well, um, I guess to every child, um, their childhood is, uh, a normal childhood. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That was, it was normal to me. Yeah. <laughs> Except that there were some of us who would have given a right arm to have Donnie and Marie as an aunt and uncle. But <laughs> I'm going on and on. For, for those of you who out there who have absolutely no idea who uh, the Osmond family is, please wake up and get a life. Uh, run, run out and buy uh, a copy of Osmond Mania. This will catch you right up. I want to tell you, though, in advance that there's nothing on here from Eric Osmond. But this might be an opportunity for you to email uh, Polygram and tell them that they need to do uh, Osmond Mania too. Uh, Eric, any thoughts on that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, please do as he says. Yes, that was good. <laughs> Can't wake up and get a life. That was great. That got me good. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, you said it all. You said it all. It was great. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> Anything that you want to know about the Osmond family is pretty much right here. I was only hoping that I would live long enough to hear Ozzy Osbourne cover Crazy Horses. <laughs> but at this point, I would be happy if Ozzy Osbourne would live long enough to cover uh, Crazy Horses. But nevertheless, boy, that one really came out of left field. Uh, good on your family for that one. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm oh, proud of my dad. For that song. That's a great song. I want to cover it one day. That'd be cool. To do a cover no, I, with you know what? I was going to ask you if you had any ambition to do that. I do. I, do. I, I, would, I would love to cover that song. I, th- I uh, thought that would be crossing the line. So how would, how exactly no. would you do it? How what? How exactly would, would you, you would obviously approach the song a bit differently. Your brothers sort of did it, approached it from a heavy metal point of view. Exactly what, what, what angle would you be coming at it? I'd probably hit it electro. I would do an EDM synthwave version because that's what I'm focusing on right now. Uh, in the next few months, we'll be releasing some um, synthwave retro, like 80s vibe, electronic music style of uh, that, that, that genre of music is coming out for the next few months. And if I had the opportunity during this time, I would do it that way with my dad. Hopefully he'd be down to be in the music video because that'd be really cool to have a Jay Osmond cameo. But uh, I personally, I think it would be awesome. And if, yeah, I'm, if, I I'm, know. if I'm the only person in the world who would appreciate it, you should do it anyway. <laughs> let's, let's, let's start something. Let, 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 let's, let's start it somehow. Like make a, make a post and say, who would be interested in that? I mean, yeah, let's do that. You know? I'll let, I'm, I'm, all in favor say I. I, 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 I. I. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having such a great sense of, of humor about that. I, I appreciate it. Of course. But I am serious. I, you know, I am you serious. Too. Yeah. Let's do it. You're getting me excited because now I want to go do that. <laughs> Let's do that. All right, Noah, you want to? Okay, so pulling back into the world of the present. Um, right. <laughs> because you're a very busy man, uh, what's the best way for people to keep track of what you're doing these days? Uh, I would say the main two are Instagram and YouTube. So we appreciate all of our subscribers on YouTube and, and uh, that helps keep that channel going and any following on Instagram is very appreciated. So thank you all for keeping in touch that way, mostly on, on Instagram and, and YouTube. Yeah. Yes. Go follow him. And, and it's um, and, Eric yes. Osmond official, right? At Eric Osmond. Official. I think it's Eric Osmond dot official. I think on the Instagram, oh, right. And then forgot YouTube. That. Mm-hmm. forgot that dot there. Either way that, yeah, you'll find it. If you type in, there's only a few Eric Osmond's. Um, oh, right. now you just opened a, a door that we didn't want to open. <laughs> But now we're going to open it. Let's do it. Open that door. <laughs> Bring it on. When, when, when I was doing, I do a lot of research on the interviews that I do to try and find interesting questions and so on and so forth. There is another Eric Osmond out there. There is. There is. He, he's a film editor. Yes. He should be ashamed of himself <laughs> for having the same name as you. <laughs> it really, he, had first. he had a first, you know. It doesn't matter. You did more, than <laughs> it. but 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 the point is, there is only one Eric Osmond official. The the, the film right. guy, the editor doesn't have its own Instagram page. <laughs> nobody, cares, nobody cares about the editors. I know. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, no, you, Thanks you worked on some of the Marvel uh, films. Yeah, I would love to meet him one day. If you're watching Eric, I want to meet you, man. Yeah. I can't. I can't tell you how confusing that was only because oh. I, I knew your family so well that, and I was trying to make a connection with this Eric Osmond and it was a blind alley. <laughs> yep. That, yeah, that was <laughs> it, it yeah. everyone. Like I fell for it too at first that um, your dad was Ken Osmond. Right. Which, yeah. Other and, Eric Osmond out there who edited the Marvel movies. That is your father. Um, <laughs> right. And your father is Jay. Jay Osmond, yeah. Jay Osmond, yes. So no more long Google searches or Wikipedia searches, IMDb searches. Watch this interview, no once and for all, and it is settled and down. I mean, I'm just glad he has a good. This is, this is the original, okay? Oh, Except. <laughs> Uh, I'm the original. Yeah. No, I, I was tempted for a time to change, like to put my initials in there and, and just, my, but he's Eric E. Osmond. I'm Eric C. Osmond, but I don't have my initial on the public um, platforms. It's just Eric Osmond. So that's probably where the confusion is. So he goes by Eric E. Osmond now. At least he changed that once I started doing uh, more stuff in media. So that was interesting. I want to meet him. I want to meet him. Although if you, if you redo Crazy Horses, he, he may actually want to take credit for that. That's true. Is there, is there, is there maybe any? He'll edit it. Maybe he'll edit the music video. That'd well, be great. That, 
is there any way I could possibly plug that song any more than I already have? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> a great idea. Eric, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak to us. Uh, and I know that all of us uh, wish you the best of success in the coming years. And uh, any message you want to leave with uh, the fans of The Chosen before we sign off? Um, I, I just want to thank you guys. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to, to meet with me and, and for everybody watching this. And um, it's been just a wonderful thing to be involved um, with the production itself and with everybody involved on a personal level, on a public level. I think it, it's just all great energy and I'm just honored to play the part that I am with it. So um, thank you. Just gratitude is all I can say. Thank you. And we're out. Okay. It's Noah Bennett, founder of Against the Tide Media. I've got a quick favor to ask that is as fast as the click of a button. If you're a fan of The Chosen and ATTM special content on this channel, you can easily show your support by liking this video, clicking subscribe, and the notification bell. You'll be one of the first to know when new videos are released. This will help us continue to grow and spread our message to the world through interviews and other special features, such as Zoom rooms, chatting with The Chosen, 53 Questions with Reina, and talking back with Taryn Barr. Actually, only 12% of our viewers are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Only 12%, meaning that almost 90% are not. And I'd love for you to join us in helping The Chosen, along with other Christian entertainment, to reach as many people as possible. And it really helps so much. Thank you so much for all of your incredible support. And remember, like, subscribe, notification bell. Thank you again. Hello, Mr. Ratai Chong. Hello. How come I can't see myself? How come I can't see myself? You there? Hello? Oh, hey, ah, there we are. Thank you. This, this is about as good as I clean up for today, so. Oh, I have my volume turned down. Uh, oh. Wait, where's the speaker? Oh, I, I have it connected to my headphones. Oh. There we go. Much better. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Nice. So. Just wait for Mr. Osman to get on. Okay. I moved, I moved the alien and Mr. Potato Head so you could see Mr. Potato Head instead. I did your screen with them this morning. You know, no, I've been waiting for them to give me advice. And thus far, they've had nothing for me. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Goodness. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know what to think anymore. If you can't get advice from Mr. Potato Head, frankly, I don't know who you can get advice from. So... Oh, and Eric just came in, so admit. How are you guys? Hey, there he is. Doing great. Hey, Eric. Right. How's it going? Good to see you guys. How are you? Good. Cool. Is, uh, is the technology a wonderful thing? I know, right? It's, right. It's like it's like you're actually here talking, except you're not. Yes, I know. It's weird. I know. I'm crazy. 
Um, Eric, just so you know in advance, I, I don't know if you got a chance to look at the questions that we emailed you in advance. Yeah, I did. They're great. Okay. We're going to be talking about some things that the Chosen fans may not be familiar with. We want you to use this as an opportunity to promote your other stuff. Thank so, you. I appreciate and, that. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm even going to put in a plug for it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Osmanania. which gets, played you started. Which, 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 gets a, which gets a lot of play here in, in the Rattachak household, I, I must say. All right. But, um, do you want me to give you two record permission in case you want to have something on your end? Because, by the way, Eric, I saw you had a question earlier and you were asking on whether this was going to be pre-recorded or whether we were going to do it live. And the answer is pre-recorded. So, Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's, because okay. I, that's because I'm a terrible actor and we frequently have to go back to fix something stupid I've said. <laughs> not, not really. Actually, you can just go ahead and start rec recording now and you'll already have oh look at that have. okay here we go i'll do that did that work all right cool i've never done that from this perspective before okay Sweet. all right so Thank we'll you. get started uh today uh noah bennett and i will be interviewing eric osmond really cool opportunity you're up noah and um well in the episode uh what was what was the I'm sorry, what was the title of it again? I forget. I know it's episode four. The perfect opportunity. The perfect opportunity. Yes, this is the perfect opportunity for me to ask this question right here and now. Um But uh, that was probably the most challenging, but other than that, everything was super smooth. It was a great set. Noah. One second, sorry. Oh. <clears throat> like, where's that coming from? You're good. I was like, what is that? I never heard that. That was my Alexa. Okay. Well, I'm very familiar with that sound. That was, I know. That was, <laughs> I've never heard morning. that sound before. Wait a minute. That was Alexa. That means yeah. Alexa's been listening to this. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. Alexa. Oh, <laughs> didn't respond. Maybe that turned on your Alexas. Who knows? But that one is now that one is now unplugged. <laughs> good. That, uh, that doesn't mean she's still not listening. There's, there's one right over there, by the way, guys. <laughs> so, you know, there's no Alexa in this house. Because oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not down with that. No Alexa here. Yeah. Noah, you're it's up. Probably, it's probably smart. <laughs> and we're out. Okay. Eric, thank you for having such a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. That was fun. Thank you. <laughs> and and I, I'm not kidding. This does get a lot of airplay in my house. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not uh, ashamed of it. You know, that, that's hard to live up to. Frankly, that's, that's, that's huge. To you know, Usually there's got to be one negative thing said somewhere, you know, but. Like, it's, it's, every it's, family has its own group of. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that in and of itself is pretty amazing. Even the second generation hasn't let down the brand. I, oh, thank you. Well, that's heavy. <laughs> I hope not to. I hope not to. <laughs> when I first started getting into fitness stuff and a lot of shirt off things, I was like, I hope I don't mess up the house. And they're like, no, that was fine. Because I was, you know, nothing. I, nothing I did ever, ever even came close to uh, being negative, it seems. And it was just a, very cool to have people respond. Even all the Osmond fans have always been super supportive in anything. So great. Not only... Great family, but great support, great people involved with it. So, yeah, well, all great things. Now you have the chosen people behind your back, too. I know, right? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm honored to, yeah, to get to know you guys more because like, I'm like, you know, I, 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 yeah, this is really cool. This is really cool. So I'm super excited for, for the things to come with it and everything. So you're, you're only going to pick up thousands of more followers as a result of this. Trust me. Oh, so. wow. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Thank you. Hope I can keep you entertained and <laughs> help. Right. Enjoy Utah. Stay safe. And hopefully our paths will cross again in the future. But I am looking forward to seeing Grandpa's Crazy and anything else that you do, particularly the remake of Crazy Horses. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> okay. You're welcome on set when we do that. If you can get that going, man, you guys, just, let's do it. Let's do it. You're invited. I, Everybody's I invited. Love it. 
Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate this. This was so fun. Yeah. Thank you guys for real. Thank you both. Thank you. Take care. Take care.